everyone. This is Mary Beth McGandrews from Dread Central. I am here today with Kira Gardner, director of Living with Chucky, the new documentary about all things Child's Play and Chucky, and your personal connection to the Child's Play franchise. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> I'm so good. I love this documentary. Um, Actually, this, do- this is just a very weird story. I hadn't seen any of the Child's Play movies like for the first one, until I- and I watched your documentary and was like, I should probably watch all of the Child's Play movies. So you got me to finally watch all of the movies. So thank you oh, so yay! much for kicking me in the butt to finally watch the entire franchise. I okay. love that. Um, so, so this was actually a short documentary first, right? Called The Dollhouse, right? Yes. Yes. So why expand it? Like what, what kind of was like the impetus to decide now to make it a full length doc instead of just the short? Uh, my film school at Florida State had a running time of seven minutes and I was one of the only kids who had like six people in their seven minute documentary and each of those interviews was like at least an hour or hour and a half if I was rambling so I actually had like seven hours of footage going into a seven minute documentary which was oh the hardest God. thing I've probably ever had to edit. Well, actually, this was the hardest thing I've ever had to edit. But uh, there was just so much footage. And I and then when the response to the short film was really positive and Chucky fans, like, because I had focused on the familial aspect of that one specifically because I only had seven minutes, uh, when Chucky fans started to respond really positive to that particular moment of, you know, Child's Play, I was like, oh my God, this should definitely be a feature. I already have seven hours of footage. I think I can just keep going. And so I just like, as I was finishing film school, I got interviews when I could, where I could. And then when I graduated, yeah. So it's like been a long time. Oh, wow. Okay. So you've been doing interviews for a while. My baby is like well past due in the oven. She's ready to be birthed to everybody. (laughs) That's wild. Okay. So you, so, inter, so were there interviews from the dollhouse or like footage you didn't use that are in this documentary proper? Yeah. Uh, um, all the court interviews that were in the dollhouse are in this movie. And oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. So like uh, Don's and Brad and Fiona and my dad, and then our joint interview are all from, and David Kirshner. And it was just because I think it was because I was like a student at the time and like 19, as well as like the personal aspect of being my dad's daughter, that I was able to just get such candid responses from people. And it was so casual because it was like, I wasn't even in the industry yet. I was just a film student. Um, And I think people let their guard down. And so when I graduated, I debated going back and asking Brad and Fiona for another interview to film it on a nicer camera, you know, Yeah. but it was a sacrifice and a choice that I made not to, because I didn't think I'd get any of those answers twice and in the way that I did. Yeah. So some footage looks way better and more put together in the newer interviews on better cameras. And some is actually from that film school project. And also with COVID, there was no way I was going to interview Brad Dorif and risk, uh, you know, he's like 70. I'm not going to risk inter- like yeah. flying to New York to interview him during a pandemic. Uh, no way. So there were some things like that, that I was just like, okay. But all that, like Jennifer's, I think was like my junior year of college and Alex, I was in school at uh, FSU, wow. which was in Tallahassee and Alex lives in Clearwater. So I like drove four hours down to see Alex and like back on a weekend to go interview him. Yeah. Wow. Wait, that's so cool. Yeah. Very, very, like very much independent filmmaking. <laughs> yes. Very much DIY, like collecting yes. things over the years and putting together like this really awesome puzzle about the franchise. Yes. We, so then you also have people who are not involved in the franchise, like Abigail Breslin. And like, how did you go about picking those interview subjects who maybe weren't involved personally in the franchise, but had that relationship? Like, how did you find those subjects? Uh, it was still DIY, baby. It was who I had access to and made since. So Abigail oh. and I met on um, Zombieland 2. I went to go visit my dad on set and she and I became friends. And so then I texted oh, her. Oh, sweet. Yeah. And uh, so a producer had uh, a friend ha- at the time had suggested getting some outside perspective of people who are in the genre 
Cool. Um, and so it was just like, who do I have access to? Who knows? Like, I cannot pay you. <laughs> and, and who, so it's really a testament. All those guest interviews are a testament to who is so kind as well. That's amazing like, to hear. <laughs> like, can I have two hours of your time? Oh, like an hour to an hour, uh, like set up in, uh, yeah. but yeah. So like Lynn Shay is a sweet, amazing angel that made the most sense. Um, but Lynn Shay in any documentary I love just because I feel like she's so knowledgeable about so much stuff in the genre she could talk about anything even if she wasn't in the movie oh my god yeah yeah I could listen to her there's so many things about of hers I wanted to put in there but they had nothing to do with Chucky and I'm like this is so cool though I'll just do a Lynn (laughs) Shay documentary at some point I mean Um, yeah so it's like who I had access to uh through my dad or like friends I met Dan Poppenmeyer on TikTok so oh cool yeah (laughs) <laughs> do you have a favorite interview that you did that was like a, either like surprising or like especially insightful and like just wasn't a joy to kind of conduct uh that's oh some of them were like stressful Jennifer Tilly's interview was like I had 45 minutes before she was supposed to be on the red carpet for Halloween Horror Nights so it was like in a ballroom with a bunch of like universal executives and it was just me and I was like 19 at the time so I was doing like camera lights and audio and it was a little scary. So it was fun. Oh my God. Like I loved it because after that interview, we all went to Halloween Horror Nights, which was fun. Um, so I liked that, but it was a little stressful. And then I'm trying to think, Lynn's just amazing to be in the presence of. John Waters was so much fun because we went to his actual house in um, Baltimore and uh, although it was like brief because he was in the middle of writing a book it was still like so fun to get to know because also my dad did hairspray the uh with John oh, Travolta. Yeah. so like we I am that's also a name that was from my childhood that I just like never met that person so to finally meet him in person was so cool was yeah. his house just as weird as I imagine it being oh yeah oh yeah it's I it's crazy <laughs> So I do have to know, do you have a favorite entry in the Child's Play franchise? Do you have a personal favorite? Child's Play 2. Child's Play 2. It is so good. It's so good. I love the production design and the color palette. I love the pink house that they're in. Uh, And I love the, one of my best friends is adopted. So I really loved that it was like the foster sibling relationship between Kyle and Andy and also like I'm a younger sister so seeing like the big sister trope was nice uh because I could relate to it and then that toy factory scene is so awesome so in making this documentary it's both about the franchise obviously but also about you and your childhood was it ever like kind of nerve-wracking to open up like that and open up about your life like on camera for thousands of people yeah see I didn't like (laughs) think about that (laughs) <laughs> like I just like did it because I was like this makes sense filmmaking wise and then I like after the film festival circuit people started like asking similar questions of like was that a little like were you nervous about that and I'm like oh my god I didn't realize like people are actually watching this now like this was just something I was doing in my bedroom editing but like oh my god yeah people are seeing this now and I'm like 19 in my interview and no idea how to do my eyebrows and they look weird and stuff like that and I'm just like, oh my God, yeah, it is a little weird. And I and I see some criticism online of just like people wishing I, I went even further with myself in the documentary. And it's yeah. just crazy because I, I thought like, yes, that's the different angle in this documentary and like a little bit more interesting. But I was like, who am I? I'm not in the Child's Play franchise. I have just been adjacent to it. And so for that to be like a criticism is actually kind of validating of like, oh my God, you wanted to see more of that? I was kind of shy and not fully going as in depth as I could. So yeah. I just hope that that was appreciated. But at the same time, I'm like, there's footage of me when I'm three in here. That's weird. That is wild. Was there anything that you wish you had included, specifically like your personal stories or like your own connection that you wish you had included in the documentary that didn't make it or you didn't think about including? Um, Yeah, like there's a, uh, it's just hard because it's like the documentary was, was my goal was to try and do like a retrospect and make it personal because you can't talk about how people felt about the movies without talking about the movies first. Yeah. 
yeah, I wanted people who weren't even Chucky fans to be able to come in and watch this and be like, okay, I can figure yeah. it out. Um, and so there was a lot of personal stories between my dad and myself of, of our relationship, as well as Brad and Fiona. And like, they dove deeper into their relationship, but it was really hard in the editing process because the, that is di diverging from the child's play umbrella. Yeah. So to get back from diving into those stories, it would have been like a three hour long documentary and like with a lot of tangents into the personal, which is great, but it was really yeah. hard for me as an editor to get back into the story itself, especially because Brad and Fiona's, you know, interview was from a while ago. My dad yeah. and I could film new stuff, you know, at the drop of a hat because I, I was with him, but, and then with COVID, it just was like, okay, I couldn't dive into tangential personal stories as much as I would have liked to there I mean you have to have so much amazing footage that you have to sitting on hard drives and you're like what am I gonna do with this these stories are so cool <laughs> yeah I'm like I don't know I should have just like put those in as I have I have a few things in the bonus features that are things that got cut oh, hell yeah. time, but I could have also put like just those stories of but then also some of them are so like I said they were so candid so some of them are so personal that it was yeah. also like an internal debate of like, I don't know if they would actually want that shared. Okay. Yeah. That is kind of like, hmm. so you would, you, <laughs> would you ever make, are, are, are you planning on making a, any like feature fiction films in the future? Fiction is not true, right? Yes. Non-documentary. Non <laughs> Great. Um, yes. Yeah. My goal is to go into narrative horror or like narrative fantasy or fantasy horror. Uh, oh, yeah. For sure. I am in the process of writing a screenplay right now. And then I just had somebody reach out to me for like a slasher uh, film uh, two days ago. So we will see. I was in the documentary space for a bit and I did the documentary. Hopefully it gets put together of the Foo Fighters movie Studio 666. I shot the oh, making. Oh, cool. I shot the making of that entire movie from first script read to the premiere last year. So I hope that comes out at some point, obviously with the passing of Taylor Hawkins, like it's yeah. going to be a minute before anybody um could digest that but um yeah. you know hope it, it'll take so long to edit that hopefully in time but it's out of my hands because it's with a studio unfortunately but um yeah I plan on getting into narrative very soon hopefully I'll probably do a short and then dive into my first feature feature what subgenre of horror are you would you be most excited to work with I don't know what it's called <laughs> like um we have a lot of movies lately that have been like playing with our senses like hush is a death oh yeah yeah yeah. and um bird box was sight and quiet place is sound so, so I, I like stuff like that where it's take your you're taking away one of your five senses or you're not allowed to use one of those um I don't know if that's body horror I don't think it is I, yeah, I don't know what it is but I know you mean that like I, I just watched a movie like that about playing with senses and like what it means to have yeah that is yeah I like that I'm also a big creature feature person so like I want a monster I want my monster movie so badly all right well fingers crossed manifesting a monster movie monsters well, thank you so much for chatting with me today about living with um, your new documentary, living with Chucky and everything about it. I really appreciate it. And everyone oh. living with Chucky, check it out. Check it out. Check it out, Girl Scouts. <laughs> thank you so much.